So let's first look at what some of our measures are we do this um, interview protocol. First of all, we have a semi-structured interview that asks participants demographic information and also um, asks about their racial discriminatory experiences. Like Shane mentioned before, participants are asked to recall one to three racial encounters. They elaborate on the story and they also talk about when or where in their life they encounter um, those racism events. They also talk about how frequently they've encountered similar racial incidents throughout their life. Um, they are asked to choose one of the most memorable events to keep that in mind in order to answer the following questions on the scale. So the testing battery also have a trauma symptom checklist to assess trauma-related symptoms, also include SAO90, which assess primary symptoms. Uh, we also included a pupil color racial identity attitude scales, which um, is helping us to understand participants racial identity attitude status. Um, similar to many other forensic assessments, it's important to understand if um, race-based traumatic stress reactions are distinct from other symptoms, or if someone's malingering behaviors is actually impacting their way of reporting their reactions. Therefore, we including a SIMS scales, which help us to understand if participants are presenting malingering behaviors. Lastly, um, MCMI scales are included in our in this protocol in order to help us understand how one's personality traits might impact their way of expressing um, their reactions to racism. So how is um, RBTSI different from the pen and pen, paper and pencil scales? First of all, it's an individual, individual based interview. The nature of the interview allows participants to have a deeper exploration of their experiences. Also, um, during the interview process, they get to um, focus on their emotional reactions more. Um, lastly, the interview protocol is developed to be used as a clinical forensic um, testing battery in the future. So in order to have this preliminary study, we collect a small sample set of 63 people. Um, as you can see, the majority of the sample was were female, and it is a racially homogeneous sample. Um, the participants were all black. Um, the age range from 18 to 49, and uh, uh, you can see from the pie chart um, that is their religion affili affiliation um, in our, of our sample set. So here's the procedure of this study. Um, the important thing to know is that so participants are contacted and interviewed by interviewers from our research team who also self-identify as black. And they were interviewed um, for their demographic information, also RBTSS scale. Um, however, after this, they complete the following scale independently by themselves. So in order to understand the individual racial discrimination experiences, we conduct a sample frequency. As you can see from the table, the most frequently reported more racism events. Um, the first thing, the first one they showed was verbal assault in the sample set, followed by treated on the basis of stereotype, and the third one is denied access or service. At the right hand side, you can see the frequency of similar events happen in participants' life. So um, the majority of our uh, participants reported that those events happened in their life more than once. So 90, 90, about 90% of our participants reported that they did not expect a racism, racist event happened, and they also said that they could not control, um, and those events has caused their emotional pain. So we also run, in order to understand the relationship among um, measurements within this protocol, we also run several um, correlations. The first thing we find is that there's no relationship um, between RBTSS and also SIMS scale. As you can recall, this means that there's, there's no relationship between RBTS and linear behaviors. So table one is kind of a big monster. So I just want to point out that we can first look at the rate numbers, which indicates that within RBTS scales, um, RBTS total score 
um, were positively, highly positively correlated with anger scales and to a lesser degree depression. When you look at the green numbers, um, you can see that within, again, within RBTSS, the anxiety subscales were inversely correlated with intrusion, avoidance, and hypervigilance. Um, with regard to RBTS and racial identity scales, we can look at the blue numbers, which you can see that the RBTS avoidance of scales um, were negatively correlated with uh, racial identity dissonance and also resistance. So this is another big monster. Um, the table tells us the correlation between RBTSS and trauma symptom checklist scales. Um, so we first look at the red number. Uh, the red number told us that RBTS avoidance subscale um, were negatively correlated with trauma symptom checklist total score, depression, and anxiety. Um, as for the green score, um, this means that RBTS intrusion subscales was negatively correlated with trauma symptom sexual abuse trauma index. So this table, um, we, from this table, we can see that um, there were several correlations between RBTS, SS, and also SEL90. Um, so we first look at the blue um, numbers. Similar to trauma symptom checklist, there's also a pattern um, between RBTS and SEL90. So this blue number shows that RBTS avoidance um, subscales were negatively related to SEL90's interpersonal sensitivity, depression, psychoticism, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive. So the last one, let's look at the red number, which indicate that RBTS intrusion was negatively related to SEL phobic anxiety subscales. So finally, um, what did we find? First of all, um, the individual-based information uh, supported the race-based traumatic stress model um, in that um, a lot of participants reported that those racism events that experienced wasn't something they expected, and when that happened, they actually felt no control over that. And they also find that they had a, a lasting psychological effects on, on, in their, on their life. Um, more importantly, uh, they also reported that they experienced similar racism events several times in their life at different aspects, sometimes at their work environment, at school, or at the store. Um, also based on our correlation findings, um, we can see that within the RBTS scales, they, there was a considerable overlap between total scores and anger scores. So this could mean that anger is a more significant and meaningful component of race-based traumatic stress injury. Um, we also see that RBTS avoidance was negatively related to several symptom scales of SEL90 and TSC40. So if avoidance, um, if people wanted to, um, in order to have other emotional reactions to be high, such as SEL90 interpersonal sensitivity, uh, TSC40 anxiety, depression, total scores, um, individual's avoidance scales, uh, scores must be low. So this finding could mean that people may have racial encounters that are most vulnerable and emotionally painful in situations they cannot avoid. Another explanation would be that when people experience race-based trauma um, happen to that, they may cope with it by um, trying to avoid um, things that remind them of the, of the events, and also trying to numb their emotions. So therefore, they're, um, in, they have more restricted um, effect after the event happened. So we also find that intrusion reaction, reaction associated with racial experiences seem to be unrelated to sex abuse trauma. This could confirm that Race is a core element in the trauma experiences of, of the individuals instead of other type of trauma. Results also show that there were two inverse relationships between RBTS, avoidance, and racial identity dissonance and um, resistance. So it's likely that when individual 
um, experience racial identity transitions, when they're open to examine both their old and new racial identities, they become more open to, um, to look at those racial racist events happen to them without trying to push away uh, their unpleasant emotions. <clears throat> so those are um, So those are um, the main key points from our presentation. Now I'm giving time to our discussion, um, David, David Brian Davis, and also our chairperson, um, Dr. Carter. <laughs>